Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. So today we are gonna be doing something kind of different. As you can see by the title today, I'm gonna be talking about my experiences growing up as a gay. <laughs> I can't take nothing seriously. Okay, y'all know it's Pride Month, it's June. Happy Pride Month to everyone on the spectrum. Y'all, this is a gays only event, go home. Yeah, so I'm gonna talk about my experience. Um, I was originally going to do like a coming out story, but my coming out story isn't really much of a story because A, it happened very recently, like two years ago, and B, it's not that big. I'm gonna talk about it in this video. It's gonna be towards the end, cause like I said, it's more recent, but I'm just gonna do a whole like life story pretty much. Um, who the fuck am I? Life story, like, okay. Um, why can I, okay. My stomach just growled. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get started, but before we do, as always, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Subscribing is free as hell. Like, do I really have to keep saying it? Like, at this point, I think you don't like me because I feel like I checked my thingy a while ago and it was like 55% of the people who watch my videos aren't subscribed, so what's the issue? let me know. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get started. If you see me looking over to the left, as I always do in most of my videos, today I have like hella notes, y'all. Wait, let me scroll down. Hella notes, hella notes. I just didn't want to miss anything because I'm an old man. My life has been long. <laughs> let me stop saying I'm old. I'm not old. Anyway, this is the worst intro I've ever done, ever. Anyway, let's just go ahead and get into it. So I have four different like sections of this video I'm gonna break it up into. So I have my childhood, teenage years, college years, and then adulthood. It's gonna be split up at the bottom. So if you want, <clears throat> what the fuck? <clears throat> Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, it's gonna be split up at the bottom. So if you wanna skip around, you can, but I think you should watch the whole thing because it's gonna really get, you know, you're gonna get everything about me and my life growing up as a so let's just start with my childhood. So I was born October 29th, 1994 to a loving mother and father. I believe my mom and dad were married at the time that I was born. But when I was in kindergarten, they got divorced. And I vividly remember being in the car on my way to kindergarten where my mom pretty much told me that my dad wasn't going to be around. He was moving out. And yeah, they were not going to be together anymore. That's like one of my earliest memories. And it's kind of a fucked up memory to have. But it's one of the earliest memories I have. So my first instance of me ever feeling like I had like a liking towards another boy it was like I was like six or seven years old I remember I went to a summer camp and there was this boy that I used to like talk to and hang out with and play with and I remember like really liking him but then also in first and second grade there was this girl named Ashley which shout out to Ashley if you're watching this she's probably not but I also had a little crush on her too so I'm like yeah I had a crush on a boy and a girl but like I just always knew that boys didn't do things with other boys and girls didn't do things with other girls just because you know growing up in my family you know there's married couples in my family people who are dating they're always the opposite sex and also just watching tv and seeing you know boys kissing girls and stuff like that so I knew it wasn't like normal but I didn't really know what it meant so one of the first people I had known that dated someone of the same sex was my aunt my aunt had always dated men before in the past but I remember one time I was young and she was dating a girl and I was like, okay, this is different. I didn't feel anything about it. Like I didn't feel no type of way. Honestly, I can't really remember what I felt. I feel like if I felt something strong about it, I would remember it, but I don't. So towards the end of 2003, me and my sister and my mom, we moved to Georgia to be with my mom's husband at the time because he lived up here. Before we moved though, I saw my dad every other weekend because like I said, they did get divorced, but he lived like five minutes up the road. So like every single weekend I would stay with him. But once we moved to Georgia, like I rarely saw my dad, but you know, we'll get to that a little bit later in the video. So my first year here in Georgia, I was eight turning nine and I was in the third grade. And I vividly remember having a little crush on another boy. We um, rode the bus together and we sat together on the bus. We didn't have a class together. We only rode the bus together. And I just remember liking him. But all this instances of me like liking other boys, like I've never like did anything or like made a move, I guess you can say, because I just knew that that wasn't a thing that I should be doing, you know? So that's really it about my elementary school years. We're just gonna skip to middle school because nothing else really happened in elementary school. But Isaiah from fifth grade, if you're watching this, I'm not gonna say what school we went to because that's gonna be a little too specific and I don't wanna embarrass myself. <laughs> but if you're out there watching this, slide in my DMs. That was like the biggest crush I had all through elementary school, this boy named Isaiah in the fifth grade. He was so cute. It was like he, like I remember back then 
being in the same grade as him in fifth grade and thinking that he looked so much older. Like, I feel like he probably got held back twice because he obviously wasn't like 10 years old like I was. He couldn't have been. So middle school began for me. And of course, you know, these are the years where, you know, you're hitting puberty, hormones are going crazy. So of course I had plenty of crushes on boys in middle school, but I didn't really make any advances because like I said, A, I just knew it wasn't something that I should do. And B, I was very antisocial. I was very like quiet. I didn't really like talk to many people. I was always a very tiny person. Like I was always super short, super skinny with a huge head. And for some odd reason, my mom would get my hair cut to where I had pretty much no hair. They used to call me Little Bill. It was kind of embarrassing. But yeah, I was an easy person to pick on. Um, I was a little bit more effeminate than most guys. So of course that G word, that gay word, that F word, you know, was tossed around. And that's kind of how I got into my last fight I ever got into, which was in sixth grade because this guy was bullying me and he like threw a basketball in my head and I know he did it on purpose. So we fought. Um, my mom knew I got into the fight cause I got suspended, but I didn't tell her why I got into it. I just told her that he threw a basketball in my head. I didn't tell her like everything about it because I didn't want her to know that. But the crazy thing is in middle school, like most of the guys made fun of me like for me being me, but I also had a lot of guy friends. Like most of the friends that I had in middle school were boys. I didn't really have a lot of girl friends until high school. In high school, I didn't really have any male friends. Like I had like acquaintances, I guess you can say, like we would like be cool, we would talk, but people I would like talk to outside of school and hang out with outside of school were always other girls in high school but we'll get to high school in a little bit. And also in the sixth grade, my mom got remarried to my current stepdad. They're still married to this day. I think that's really it with middle school. Like I feel like elementary and middle were very tame. I feel like all the drama and the tea happens in high school. So let's get to it. So teenage years, we're going into those years. The start of freshman year of high school, I was 14 and yikes. I don't know if it's just me that thinks this, if I'm making this up, but isn't it a thing that like most people like come out freshman year of high school? I don't know if that's something that I just made up, but I thought that was a thing, but it wasn't me because I was so scared. <laughs> I was definitely still in the closet when freshman year popped around. That closet may have been made of glass. Cause I feel like if you knew me, you knew, like it wasn't like that oblivious, <laughs> but I feel like in my later years, like when I got older, I kind of, you know, I don't know if I've like mentally like trained myself to act a little bit more straight around guys. I don't know. I don't feel like I do, but I think I can kind of pass it straight now if I really wanted to, even though I don't, like I'd be wanting people to know because I don't, I hate when people come up to me and be like, can I ask you something and please don't get mad? Because I already know what you're going to ask me and the answer is yes. Like, I wish people would just know up front so I won't have to deal with that conversation because it's so annoying. But anyway, we're not even there yet. Things got a little crazy once I made my Facebook account. So ninth grade year, I was still mainly using MySpace. <laughs> Y'all, the year is 2009, okay? MySpace was still a thing back then. But Facebook was also out, so... I didn't have one though. Some of my friends convinced me to make a Facebook and I was like, okay, sure. So I made one and of course I was able to connect with people from my school, people in my classes, but I was able to now, you know, add people that weren't in my school and people that didn't live in the same city or even state as me. So things got a little crazy. So with all these brand new people that I'm meeting through Facebook, I was able to like talk to different guys from like other schools, other cities, other states. And specifically this one guy that I had like a huge crush on, he went to a different school than me. He lived in the same city, but he just went to a different school. And he was a couple years older than me. I believe he was a junior at the time and I was a freshman. And one day him and one of his friends, because his friend had a car, they came over to my house and we hung out for a little bit. Before I get into this story, I have to mention that I got my first cell phone for my 15th birthday. And it's kind of late because I feel like a lot of people had cell phones before they turned 15, but I never was the one to talk on the phone when I was in middle school. But when I got to high school, everyone had cell phones. So I was like, mom, I need a cell phone because I am a loser because I don't have one. So my first cell phone was a fucking LG Neon. Like I'm gonna put a picture on the screen so y'all see what it's like. But and that was my first phone. A lot of people in high school, especially around the time I was in high school had types of phones like those, like either the ones that flip out into a keyboard or they still had a flip phone or they had the most basic like Android touchscreens because iPhones were out, but literally like, I don't think I knew anyone in high school up, in, up 
probably until like senior year, junior, senior year, when iPhones became a little bit more available to everyone. No one really had iPhones. <laughs> like we all still had those basic iPhones. But anyway, guys came to my house and they never stepped foot in the house. And I feel like my mom thought that I had other people in the house. And that's one of my mom's biggest pet peeves growing up. She never wanted anyone at her house that she didn't know, especially if she wasn't there. I had these two guys at my house. We never went inside. We were only in the driveway. We were just talking, whatever. And my mom called me <laughs> and like we were on the phone talking. I think she was like at Target or something, I don't know. And she like heard my friends talking in the background and she was like, who is that? And I was like, oh, that's just, this is the TV. I know, I know I have the TV a little loud. Of course she didn't believe that. So when she got home, she went through my phone and my Facebook messages. And of course she saw some things in there that she didn't want to see. So I pretty much got kicked out. And I use quotations because like, I didn't go anywhere. Like I got kicked out and I literally just sat on the porch for like three hours probably. I was out there for a while. Maybe I wasn't out there that long and I just felt like it was long because granted this happened around January. Um, I remember cause it was after the first semester of freshman year. It was around January, maybe February. So it was nighttime. So it was pretty cold out and I was just sitting outside. I'm like, so I don't know what to do. Like I was like obviously upset crying. And I was just like, what do I do? Like, do I just sit here? Do I go somewhere? Like, I don't know. But after a few hours, they finally let me in the house and we probably had a conversation. But honestly, if we did, I don't remember it because I probably was still shook by the fact that I was sitting outside for three hours in like 40 degree weather. So after that, I pretty much got my phone taken and I wasn't able to use the internet. And that pretty much ran up until summer of 2010. So my freshman year of high school was also my sister's senior year of high school. So she graduated in May. And a lot of my family from Florida came up to, you know, see her graduate. And I think something may have happened prior to my sister graduating, because at this point, my mom and my stepdad were sick of me. They pretty much sent me back with my grandma, and I stayed with her for about two months during the summer. So, of course, they gave me my phone back because they knew I was going to be seven hours away in Florida. But my mom did tell my grandma not to allow me to use her computer because I was technically still on punishment. But I remember like the first week I was in Florida, my grandma wasn't there because she was somewhere. I don't remember, but she wasn't with us. It was just me and my stepbrother. Oh yeah, my stepbrother also came with me, my youngest one. Of course, like I was sneaking on the computer at times, but then after a while, like once my grandma actually did come and like after like a couple weeks, she didn't even really care. Like she let me get on the computer. She didn't really care. Oh my God, I miss my grandmother so much. And I feel like I love like, it was kind of a bad situation as to why I went or I don't know, honestly, because I don't really have these conversations with my parents anymore like my mom my stepdad we don't really talk about this so I don't really know what was the reasoning behind me going to Florida I'm just kind of taking context clues into consideration it was probably a bad reasoning why I went down there but I'm so glad I did because my grandma actually ended up passing away like three months after I left she actually passed away two days after my birthday my 16th birthday so I'm kind of glad I was able to go down there because after a while like we kind of stopped going to Florida we used to go like every couple months seem like but after a while oh shit what the fuck there's something in the like a fly just flew in front of me after a while we stopped going as often so i'm really glad i went but since i was able to get on the internet use my facebook account i was able to meet someone that i would eventually like consistently talk to up until like my senior year of high school and i would call this my first relationship but honestly it wasn't really a relationship because a we both weren't out at the time and b we never like really exclusively said that we we're dating but we talked pretty consistently for about two years so remember when i said i didn't really see my dad a lot after I moved to Georgia. Well, this summer when I was in Florida, I actually saw my dad for the first time since I was nine years old and I was 15 at the time. So it had been like six years. <laughs> I had to do that quick math in my head. Crazy thing is, after this time, I wouldn't see him again until I was 22. So I may have daddy issues. I don't know. Like, I don't feel any type of way towards my dad. Like, I don't dislike him. I don't really feel anything for him right now. I, I, honestly, I need to probably see a therapist. Like, so after I came back from Florida, after spending a few months there with my grandma, like things seemed to be normal. But I remember one Sunday at church and at this time, I guess I need to say this, my stepdad was creating his own church because he's a pastor. So he was starting his own church around this time. And I remember one Sunday at church, this lady prayed for me. And she screamed at the top of her lungs while she was praying to me, you, you are, are not, not gay. gay. Like she said that multiple times in front of everybody. And ever since then, my feelings towards church have been kind of 
and i was always forced to go to church because i lived at home and there was no like i couldn't say i don't want to go because who do you think you are but ever since then i really haven't really been feeling church my relationship with god has also been kind of weird lately like i just don't really know because like it's i've always thought like how can i you know go to a church and like have a relationship with god when i've been told all my life i'm gonna go to hell because i'm gay and i've always seen like other gay people who are really in the church like kind of rebuttal that but I don't know maybe I'm just not really into churches because they're so judgy but you know I digress I haven't been to church in over two years so that's another conversation for another day I was given like all these books to read and my stepdad was telling me all these things I need to do so that I could possibly not be gay and that I can repent to God but I mean at the time like I honestly was trying to do those things because I was like no I'd rather be straight and not have to deal with constant ridicule than be myself and like be ostracized by like people that supposedly like care for me and love me this gay life wasn't for me at the time I was like I'm tired of people just constantly coming at me and it's be and it's so it was so wild to me when I was young because I was always a good kid like I never got in trouble at school I got good grades in all actuality I was like the perfect child but that whole gay thing was like uh like if I was straight I wouldn't have any issues right now but the fact that I'm that one thing that I'm gay. You would think I murdered like somebody's kitten and their whole family. Like, I don't know. It used to drive me so crazy when I was young. I'm like, bruh, because it would be so many other kids that I went to church with. They would be getting like arrested, caught doing drugs, like getting bad grades, cussing out their parents. And I'm like, bruh. And they would take time with them to like help them out. But I'm like, I'm not even doing anything but being myself. Like I've never ever cussed my mom out. I've never been arrested. I've never, I was scared to do drugs. <laughs> like I was so scared. Like I was scared. I've never, I've still to this day never smoked weed. I've done edibles, which I feel like I just prefer edibles, but like I was always so scared to do things because I always wanted to just not get in trouble, you know? But anyways, I guess that's it with my like teenage years. I had my first kiss when I was 17 with that same guy. I don't even know if he knows that he was my first kiss. We still follow each other on Twitter and Instagram. So shout out to him if you're watching this. You were my first kiss. And yeah, I graduated in 2013 and I guess this will begin my college years. So I graduated high school in 2013 and I was gonna go off to college, but I was literally short 0.5 points from getting a scholarship that was gonna allow me to go off to school. In Georgia, they have this scholarship called the HOPE Scholarship. So if you have a 3.0 GPA, the HOPE Scholarship covers about 90% of your school costs or whatever. So the HOPE Scholarship only considers all of your classes besides your electives. Like they don't count like the PEs and the art classes. They only count like the math, sciences, all of your core classes. Without my electives, my GPA was a 2.95. Let me say that again, 2.95. I was 0.5 points away. I applied to a university here and I got in and I spent five years getting my bachelor's degree. So in college, I was a little bit more free with my sexuality, if you could say that. Like I was a little bit more comfortable telling people that weren't my family, of course. And of course, I was signing up for different dating apps such as Tinder. Um, I did try Jack and Grindr, but those apps are so scary to me. Like Jack and Grindr in particular are scary to me because the location-based thing that they use is so scary. And I know that Tinder does the same thing, but on Jack to be like, oh, they're 0.21 feet away from me. Like, are you in my backyard? Like, that's so scary. So, and then also people introduce themselves with a dick pic and I'm just like, bro, there's nothing worse than an unsolicited dick pic. Like, if I wanted to see your penis, I would ask for it, you know? I also lost my virginity my college years. I was 20 when I lost my virginity. I'm kind of a late bloomer. <laughs> he also watches my videos. <laughs> Shout out to him. That was interesting. But yeah, that's when it happened. I did like talk to a guy kind of seriously back in like 2017 to the point we even went to like a beach trip together for my birthday, but nothing really happened to that. My college years were pretty boring because I worked full-time, I was a full-time student. I didn't have time to do anything else. So I guess that's kind of it about my college years, but the basics of my college years is that I was a little bit more open with who I was. So now we are in my adult year. So in January of 2019, I moved into this apartment that I live in right now. And honestly, I thought that I would be a little bit more open to like having guys over and like dating more. But honestly, I feel like the the fact that I was so secretive and so like isolated from most people growing up, I like, I'd be scared to date. <laughs> Especially meeting people off apps because I'm a little like pessimistic and I'm always like just so cautious. Especially bringing people to where I live at because I'm like, what if I bring someone over here and it doesn't go well? and then they like stalk me. That's like the top thing I think about 
So I don't be wanting people to come over here. So with all that said, I've never really been in a real relationship. Like I've never dated anymore to the point where we were like, this is my boyfriend, we're dating. Like I've only ever talked to guys and I've had like many experiences where we got really close to. Like my most recent one, I had started talking to this guy towards the end of 2019. We had met a couple years prior because we used to work together, but we reconnected through Tinder and things were going good in 2019, pretty much all the way up to the end of it. But then in 2020, shit happened kind of you know our relationship kind of deteriorated we tried again to make it work at the beginning of this year but it didn't work out so yeah single as a pringle but on september 1st 2019 that is the day that i officially like came out and i did it through a facebook post like i said it wasn't that interesting i was literally at home one night and i was like bro i'm tired of hiding i'm tired of like having to withhold like a certain part of me and why should i be ashamed of that like there's so many people out there that are just like me you know and it's like it was just so stupid for me at this point in my life to be like still not out so i made a facebook post i'll put it on the screen so y'all can read it if you want to but i got a lot of support like it's crazy like a lot of the people that reacted to it like liked it and put little hearts whatever were people from high school that i hadn't talked to in years um i had a couple family members do like i had a lot of people like message me afterwards my same aunt that you know i said that was my first time ever meeting someone that dated the same sex she messaged me and she was pretty much like nephew i knew the whole time blah 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 but she was like so superlative and she was like if you need someone to talk to i'm here my favorite aunt ever i love you if you're watching this thank you so much so the next day because i came out on september 1st and i feel like the next day because i knew it was a sunday i think the next day was veterans day or something it was a labor day it was labor day so um i was going to see my mom anyway but she called me earlier before i went over there and she was like i just wish you kind of would have told me first before you put it on facebook or whatever and i was like yeah i, I did that because so we wouldn't have to have this conversation like i didn't want to have to talk to you about it but i can't remember exactly what she said she pretty much kind of downplayed it like oh that's not really important when it kind of is, pretty much from what I gathered from that conversation is that, oh, if you get married, I'm not gonna come to your wedding. Don't introduce me to anybody that you're dating. And I'm just like, okay, that's fine. I really don't feel comfortable doing that anyway. But it's kind of sad. I should feel more comfortable talking to my mother about guys I'm dating or someone that I'm really into. But you know, I don't feel comfortable doing that. And I don't know if that's my fault or her fault, but, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Now we're here. It is 2021. I am going to be 27 later this year. Still haven't really been in a relationship. I'm kind of scared to do so. I really honestly don't feel like I will ever find anyone for me because I feel like I would have found that by now. But maybe I'm just being a little dramatic because I am only 26. I like to play like I'm old, but I'm in all actuality very young. So I'm like, maybe I will find someone. If I do, that's awesome. If I don't, it just happens. Anyone who's watching this that's a bit younger than me, who probably isn't out yet, I don't know. I just feel like everyone's situation, like we're all the same, but our situations are so different. So I feel like you should just do what's best for you. Like I used to always tell myself, I didn't want to like come out to my parents until I was able to support myself. Especially after they had kicked me out. I was like, okay, if I ever actually officially come out, I'm scared that they're going to kick me out again and I wouldn't know what to do. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to wait until I can support myself financially and all that and then do it. However, I know a lot of people aren't as fortunate as I am because some people are forced out the closet. Some people are outed, which is so shitty. It's not even that big of a deal. Like it's literally not. It's literally not. It is literally not. And I hate the people that be like, oh, it's a choice. It's not a choice. I was born this way. I know I was. I literally knew I was gay before I even knew what the word gay meant. People get mad nowadays because people are a lot more accepting of anyone on the spectrum. And people be like, oh, they're trying to force the gay community and the LGBT community on us. And I'm like, bruh, no, they're not. I saw nothing but heterosexual couples in my life and I'm still gay as hell, so what? Anyway, we're just gonna conclude this video because A, I'm getting hot, B, I'm really trying not to be like an emotional bitch in this video, I'm really trying. So I'm just gonna go ahead and end it here because I really talked about everything. If you made it always in the end, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. Happy Pride Month. We love the Alphabet community around here because I am a proud member. And yeah, that's gonna be it. Why am I waving that in? Bye.